Hello, chess lovers. I have a very beautiful game for you played by Evgeny Sveshnikov against Ruslan Sherbakov. The game was played in 1991 in Moscow. Sveshnikov had white pieces and he started with e4, c5 by Sherbakov, Sicilian defense. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, Sveshnikov goes for Nezhmedinov, Rosolimo attack e6, white castles kingside, knight e7, c3, white is preparing to establish a strong center, or at some point white can even bring the bishop on c2 square, which we will see in the game, a6, bishop a4, b5, bishop c2, d5 and e5. Well, actually playing d4 looks more active and also this d4 looks more promising, but instead after d5 we see e5. And now black himself plays d4, gaining some space and in return white is playing bishop e4, placing the bishop on this active square, bishop b7, a4 challenging black's pawn chain on the queen side, knight g6, a takes b5, a takes b5, we see Rook takes a8 and bishop takes a8. Well, actually, queen takes a8 looks better, both supporting these pieces and also controlling the a file. But instead, after rook takes a8, we see bishop takes a8. Knight a3, I ink on b5 square, knight a7. We see the exchange of light square bishops, queen b3, putting more and more pressure on b5, queen b7. c takes d4, c takes d4, and knight takes d4. Bishop takes a3, and after b takes a3, we see knight takes e5. Well, actually, castling king's side looks safer, but instead we see knight takes e5. Now comes bishop b2, threatening knight takes e6, and then winning the knight. For example, now if castling king's side, then simply knight takes e6, followed by bishop takes e5, winning a pawn. That's why after bishop b2, black played knight c4, but now comes queen g3, sacrificing the bishop on b2 square. But black didn't accept the sacrifice and castled king's side. But let's have a look what will happen if black plays knight takes b2. Then white can capture on g7, and if we move like rook f8, trying to save the rook, then knight takes e6. Using the fact that the pawn is pinned and attacking the rook, and if queen is 7, simply knight takes f8. And this is just crushing, black can't even recapture, because either queen takes b2 or even rook e1 is stronger, it's over. Let's go back after queen g3, that's why black castled kingside, now comes bishop c3 and g6 which is weakening the dark squares too much, and now Sveshnikov will artfully use that fact. Actually, it was very important to play queen b8, and if f4, only now g6. But when you are playing after bishop c3, g6 straight away, then after d3, kicking away the knight, which is controlling the e5 square, and knight b6, the queen jumps on e5 square, and now this becomes very dangerous. Overlooking Sveshnikov's next threat, Ruslan Sherbakov played knight d7, and in this position, Sveshnikov made a move and black resigned. Can you find his next move? Ready? He simply placed the queen on g7 square, giving a check, sacrificing the queen, and black resigned. Now if king takes g7, then after knight f5, double check king g8, White can either play knight e7 or knight h6, and this is a checkmate. The bishop confines the king's escaping roots, and this knight is just killing the enemy king. This suffocation mate is actually very popular, and every chess player should know this mating pattern. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave your comments. Good luck!